Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed. And today we're going to take a look in on the African Nightcrawlers and the Vermi Bag Little Mammoth. Now, for anybody who wasn't watching last week, I fed a gallon of apple goo, which is just uh, leftovers from, from apples being um, juiced. Uh, I keep a, a little bit of a gnat trap in here because apples do tend to collect. Uh, doesn't look like it had a bunch of takers this time, so that's good. The population must be slowing down. So I, I fed an entire gallon bag of apple goo to these guys. Um, so let's take a look at the edges. I think we might be uh, needing to start adding more water again. It's, it's not, you know, probably an emergency or anything, but I think in order to not get it to the emergency, then we need to be proactive about that. Okay. Kind of look at the back edge here. You can see the paper that I added is, is still nice and moist. Getting a couple of sprouts from something, not sure what. But the paper on top has been relatively untouched. We decided to take those Tivana things out, didn't we? All right, found one, getting rid of it. So let's see if there is any apple goo left after a week. That was a lot of food. So I am, I am seeing a worm ball. Kind of a diffused worm ball, but a worm ball nonetheless. Because it was just basically, you know, applesauce-ish. So there, there shouldn't have been anything that they needed to really wait to have broke down or anything like that. It should have been immediately available to the worms. Got an avocado peel that's rolling up. And so as I continue across, I'm still finding a good concentration of the worms. So they did, even when there's no avocado in the avocado shell, they still seem to love to be in the avocado shell. Kind of makes me feel bad that I break them up when I find them. So there's a little bit of apple goo left. So very tiny little little bit here. Doesn't smell off or anything like that. Um, so that's good. I did come in here um, in between and uh, there wasn't any heat. So hopefully me mixing it in with the, the bedding kind of helped it out a little bit. Um, and then also maybe when you juice something, uh, maybe that also takes out some of the stuff that feeds the, the bacteria a lot. So I'm going to do a really good flip through here and get an idea of what it looks like. I'd like to harvest this again here pretty soon. Um, more of the bedding and the apple goo. The outside is getting a little bit dry. The nights are getting down to uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll have to look and see what that is in, in Celsius. So the furnace will probably be kicking on sometime this month. So I need to make sure that I, I don't miss a step with keeping the moisture in this bin um, in good condition. So yeah, it does look like the sides are, are going to need some more moisture. So let me go get some water and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm adding quite a bit of water around the edges here. Um, it is a continuous flow through system and it does have a mortar tray 
at the bottom. So if I do overdo it, the worms will not suffocate. It will go right through. So I am just going to make sure that they get quite a bit in the way of water. All right, we're about a half a gallon. Let's lift it up and see what's uh, see how it's doing. Because a lot of times when you're adding what you think is a lot of water, when it starts absorbing into the castings, it is not as much as you think. Um, a lot of people, including me, have used sprayers, just like plant sprayers for spraying orchids or whatever, in order to um, moisten the, the castings to keep them at a good um, range only to find out later that, in fact, that really only got the beginning portion, you know, like the first inch or two um, damp, and then the, the worms were still suffering with a lot of dryness. So I am going to pull back, you know, and add some water to this lower level, flip everything over, and do the same thing again. In addition to that, they are going to get a pretty wet feeding today. Um, and since they managed to take care of a gallon of apple goo last time, I think they can manage another good size feeding. So. Although it is not ideal to do it this way, it would be better if I had my pump sprayer, but uh, it is out of commission. And it is not a good time where I live to try and locate another um, sprayer. All right, still fingers crossed for that little avocado. Another two Tivana tea bags we can take out. All right, now I am going to put down some food and then I'm going to give them some more bedding. Even though we're running out of room, the next time you see these worms, they will be being harvested. So they've got enough water. I'm going to give them some food. I'm going to put some bedding on top to top it off. And then hopefully they will do... We'll check back in another couple of weeks. So let's get that food. We have another donation from Cece. So we are going to basically line the vermi bag here with uh, watermelon. So hopefully that will, you know, help out with um, any continuing moisture problems. Kind of centralize everything here and then let me get their bedding. Okay, this is prepared bedding that I make just for the African night crawlers. If you're interested in the video, I will put that either up top here or at the end of the video. This has been sitting for about a month. I know some people have had trouble with their bedding overheating. It just means it didn't sit long enough. If you're going to do the prepared bedding, and you don't have time to let it sit for a week, don't put the molasses and the seaweed in it. Just get it wet and put some castings in it um, because if it doesn't have a week or so to sit to get started, you might end up overheating your bin. So if you're going to make the prepared bedding quickly, um, the best bet is not to put too much of anything that would heat it up. Okay, and I ran out of bedding. All right, so here's the plan. We are going to wait a couple of weeks and let them hopefully finish up the bottom, and then we will do a harvest this next time. And uh, hopefully they will cause the worms to come up to eat that melon, and the moisture will keep everybody happy. And even though I didn't see a lot of gnats, I'm going to put that gnat trap still in here. Uh, if you guys remember what that expression is, a pound of prevention or an ounce of prevention, whatever that is, if you remember what that saying is about preventing something, put that comment in the below. All right, guys, well, if you have any other comments, feel free to put them below. If you have any questions, I love to answer them. 
Um, but other than that, give me a muddy thumbs up if you like the video. If you are not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day. Thank you.